you want to count us down? Yeah. Has it been five? Or it's not real. It doesn't matter. In five, four, three, two, five. Oh. All right. <laughs> Here's what we're doing. We're here in the Toyota Solution Studio, and I'm here with, if you hadn't noticed, Sarah Silverman and Susan Silverman. We both know, we all know that they're sisters. Uh, this is Women in the World, day two. We all know that they're sisters. We all know that women aren't funny, and we also know that women aren't rabbis. <laughs> and so we have a female, a female comedian and a female rabbi. And you all just had a great panel on stage about being sisters, a lot about your family, and, and sort of clearly your parents did something right. Because I don't know what your other two <laughs> siblings are doing, but you guys at least uh, have got the batting average going well. Um, you started to talk about a really compelling issue at the end, uh, and, and then a trigger word hit you, but, but we're not going to go there. Uh, international adoption, which is which is something that you you care a lot about. You all you, you had a foster. You grew up with um, foster sisters. I, I, we my parents uh, were foster parents for periods of time. Yeah. And uh, so so you and you have two adopted children. Right. So we have five children, and two of them are adopted from Ethiopia. As I say, we produce girls and import boys. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Our family doesn't make girls. Wait, I so mean boys. <laughs> <laughs> clearly funny is a gene in your family too. It's clearly dumb. <laughs> so what, why is this back to a serious issue? Because it's hard to joke about it. Right. But, but international adoption. Some people. I know. <laughs> what, what, tell us about international adoption and how you're involved in this issue. So there are uh, between 150 and 200 million unparented children in the world. 8 to 12 million of them are in institutions of some sort. Um, uh, they're at extremely high risks for sex and drug trafficking. We're talking about young girls being trafficked. trafficked. Um, and kids who, who live that kind of life, whether in institutions or on the streets, uh, if they do survive, uh, you know, then have their own children. And there's a multi-generational tragedy unfolding. And um, internationally, our laws and our systems are against international adoption. Why is it so difficult to... to to adopt across international lines? There are actually a number of reasons. Uh, so I'll just start with one. What are one, some of them? One is that, um, is that people say you can't rob children of their heritage. You know, to me, a heritage is a gift of metaphors and paradigms and stories that help you make sense of your life. Yeah. It's not a cage that yeah. you're trapped in or, or, or obligated to at all costs. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's how it's seen, that, that, that the, the nation, the culture, has a claim on these children regardless of what it takes from them. Mm -hmm. uh, another argument is that, um, is that, uh, that many of these children um, may still have a living parent or relative. But the odds of that child being reunited with the living parent or relative are very, very small. And that efforts need to be put into maintaining families of origin and, and maintaining people so that they can live sustainable and good lives. But we don't do that by kidnapping the children and holding them hostage till someone does that. Right. That, you know, there's this image that I love of a river. And if you're standing by the river and you see that there are people drowning, what do you do? You have to pull the people out of the river. Then, you know, you also have to send someone upstream to find out why people are falling in. And people think that it seems to be a choice between taking care of the upstream, the systemic problems, and, re and, and rescuing people. And it's not a choice between those two. We don't let those children drown in that river. Um, in addition to this issue, That's I... That's great, Susie. Is that inspiring? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pulling She's the heartstrings. She's going to adopt. Uh, um, are you? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I'm ready, I'm not... <laughs> I'm gonna How be soon like, are you going to be ready? I think like early 50s, I'll, I'll adopt a couple sisters from Afghanistan or something, build a life, but uh, I'm not ready yet. I'll probably be young grandma age. That's why I need to stay like healthy and strong and stuff. You're both, um, you both preach. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you know, and you, you have a great line about, about your sisters preaching, um, that people actually listen to her. Oh, Unlike the right. prophets is what, right. you, is what you said. Right. I really feel like she's in the line of the biblical prophets. I mean, they didn't like drop F-bombs quite as much, but they um, were also less effective. And people have said to me, like, how do you feel? You're a rabbi. How do you feel that your sister you know, is like, I don't know, obscene or crass, crass in her language? <laughs> I'm not saying you are. She is. <laughs> but, um, and I said, like, I would much rather see someone 
speak of truly holy things using crass language than speak of and, and then put like oppression you know wrapped in the language of of holiness yeah yeah it's, it's authentic so and how about in terms of the issues that are inspiring you these days what is what is getting you riled up i know voter id is one that you oh that was yeah on. yeah maybe um, that was yesterday women's so what right about to tomorrow? choose yeah uh, women's right to choose it seems to be something that like voter oppression is is kind of systematically being chipped away at um and uh are you a wendy davis fan I am a Wendy Davis yeah. fan, uh huh, and um, too bad you don't vote in Texas. Yeah, well, I I love Texas, and uh, well, if they get rid of the voter fraud laws, she might. <laughs> <laughs> they keep the voter fraud laws. <laughs> um, so it's a real bullying, discreet, you know, little by little, state by state kind of system, and it's it's working for for them, and um, so I think it's important to kind of get local. Think globally, act locally. That was a pin our mom had. <laughs> All the pins. What, what, how about new projects that you're working on in the coming year? <sighs> said, said, tell me about V to V. Oh, V to Shiny V is um, something that Liz Winstead started. Uh, her website, ladypartsjustice.net, org, whatever. Type in Lady Parts Justice. Um, we're trying to get uh, men and women to uh, commit to going home to their home state and marching for women's rights in their home state capital. I will be in Concord, New Hampshire doing it, and it's September 23rd. And um, check it out. You know, I, I gain nothing from this. I probably lose work from it, but I'm happy to do it because it's, uh, that's what I'm into. <laughs> Sorry, I keep thinking when no. you say like ladypartsjustice.org.net, and I'm thinking, like, I could just picture Liz Winstead going, like, <laughs> Lady Parts Justice. No, no, Lady Parts Justice.com is taken. Lady Parts Justice. Yeah, like, 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 that can't be. It's all probably of dot com, can, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Parts Justice won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I think, I think the real story here is that you're both preachers, you're both activists, you're both citizens of the world, and you fit in perfectly with Women in the World uh, 2014. So thank That's you both for being honor. here. Thank you so much. And for sharing your story and for sharing your, your relationship and your, you know, your story. And mostly we're yeah. here about Toyota Solutions. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. And have a solution. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have a solution, tweet the Silverman. <laughs> Take care. Oh, I should have said my website. Do it. We'll add it. Uh, oh, it's not What's your web, What is your website, Just Rabbi a, Silverman? My website is justadopt.net. There we yeah. go. Visit. There we go. All go right. Go to it. <laughs> <laughs>